G'day ladies and gents and welcome back to the not so cold waters with mags. We are once again in the South China Sea. It is the year 2000, but once again we are playing one of the modded campaigns. This is the latest version of Dot Mod. This is 0 0.4.1. Um, I'll have the exact version number in the video description below at the top. It is the current version of Dot Mod. And we're doing the South China Sea campaign as the Australians, funnily enough. We are uh, under command of uh, Commander Richard Head of the HMAS Rankin, a Collins-class diesel-electric submarine. So we've been given orders to intercept a fleet of tenders in the Yellow Sea. They are potentially under escort via, via warship. Uh, we have probably not encountered them with this group. I think we've managed to locate ourselves a anti-submarine warfare patrol. We're actually still en route to the LOC, so... I'm going to get our towed array out at the moment. Collins class, it's a smaller boat, but it's surprisingly capable for a diesel electric. Um, well, actually, not surprisingly capable. This is a bit of a misconception. People hear diesel electric and think, oh, no, these things are not competitive at all. No, diesel electrics are nasty. A modern diesel electric submarine can carry all of the sensor equipment, all of the sonar equipment, and all of the same weapon systems as a nuclear attack boat. The difference between a diesel electric and a nuclear boat comes down to range and generally speed. Diesel electrics don't have quite the oomph you know, they're not powered by a nuclear reactor with massive electrical generators. They've got to be a little bit more efficient, and thus they tend to have a little bit smaller, so they tend to be a little bit to the slower side, and they don't have the endurance. Uh, obviously, a nuclear boat can circle the entire globe, every single ocean, in a round trip without having to come back and refuel at all. And because they're larger, they tend to carry more stores to be able to do that. Your nuclear boats can be larger and carry the stores to have the time, but it's kind of pointless because they do have to come back for fuel. That being said, uh, modern diesel electric boats don't just run on diesel. They've usually got things like hydrogen fuel cells on board. And, you know, the, the exact configuration can vary a little bit. But the submerge time on a modern diesel electric can be a month. So, uh, touring the world as a force projection machine, a diesel electric submarine is not a great option. Um, that's the advantage of a nuclear boat. But if you happen to be close to its home waters, because they don't have a reactor running on board and they're not actively having to pump or passively, even passively pumping water through and coolant through the boat, you know, various, there are various items in a nuclear submarine that you can't turn off that simply don't exist inside of a diesel electric. So as a general rule, they can be a hell of a lot quieter, which makes them really, really nasty. Anyways... We should probably identify our targets here before they kill us. Collins class has six tubes up front. Uh, a little limited on stores. I can see having to head back is going to be is going to be a fairly constant thing in this campaign. Um, I think it's Yanghu. Yeah, that's... Con yeah, sonar, I that's Sierra 2 is classified as escort. That's a lot clearer on the signal, but it's not. That is a looter. That Con is very sonar, clearly Sierra a looter. Sierra 1 is classified as escort. You I'm not sure about. You know what, you might not be a warship at all. You might be a merchant variant, I reckon. Yep, there you No, nope. bio, biological, blue whale. Con sonar, Sierra 3. Something is not to as see. Biologic. Right. Still don't have full solution. I'm only running 40, 41% on Sierra 1. A Sierra 2, rather. 40% on Sierra 1, which is really interesting. Sierra 1's got such a clearer signal, and yet we're still only running 40% on it. Although it is running at 30 knots, which will explain it. What's Sierra 2 running at? 12 knots. Okay. Yeah, that, that, that gets it. Alright, range is 12.8 kiloyards. 
and we are being very very quiet so marking locations they do both appear to be closing in on our location so we're just going to track their movement now conditions we had a weak duct, but a moderate layer, and we're only in 456 feet of water. Obviously, playing the South China Sea campaign, that is one thing we're going to have to get very used to. Uh, deep water is at a premium around here. There is not a lot of it, and so you've got to play... Well, we're getting off the coast of China at the location we're at at the moment, so... Um, I believe in the last time I was uh, doing a campaign in this area, it was playing in the bathtub. And that does still seem to be an appropriate way to describe this particular area. So I'm going to drop down to 150 feet. Because at the moment we're on right on 100 feet, which puts us right. So part of the submarine is both above and below. I want to make sure we're completely below the layer before we launch torps. So this pair... The Zhang Hu is listening, the Luda is pinging. Yeah, and both are heading in this direction, so we want to get torpedoes out sooner rather than later. Luda is decelerating. Con, dive at one, five, zero feet, dive by. Cool, now we want to set these to run surface once they go active. Collins class has four wires. So in a way, we're actually going to be able to do significantly more complicated shots. Shoot two one, I sir. Shoot one at. Shoot two two, I sir. Yeah, we'll be able to do significantly more complicated shots than we could in the previous campaign. We now have six tubes and four wires to play with, which is significant. It, it basically means we can have four guided torpedoes in the water and we can potentially have two anti-ship missiles or two MOS loaded at any given time or a combination of the two. So we have options while we're still using the wires. So two, so for example, two anti-ship missiles and four guided torpedoes, we could run a complex attack against four targets simultaneously with the torpedoes and then execute missile strikes on two additional targets at exactly the same time without having to uh without having to reload or put a pause in the middle of the attack so it's going to be interesting to see what happens because there's generally a lot more surface fleets in the south china sea campaign as well um the chinese the number of submarines that the chinese have even today is still pretty thin on and in 2000 they had only started putting their first uh, first diesel electrics and first nuke boats in the water themselves. I think they only had one. A lot of what China actually has is surplus or... Um, well, I wouldn't... Surplus isn't quite the right word, but purchased from Russia. So it's a lot of Soviet equipment that's been converted over. A lot of it's been renamed. But it's it's not native designs. Alright, so at this point we're just going to let the torpedoes run on an angle and then we'll swing back and attack in this direction. The Zhang, I believe... We should probably just check these up. I'm a little out of date on these. Uh, Zhang Hu. 28 knots maximum. It's 14, uh, 1,400 tons. 175 crew on board. Anti-missile defense systems, guns... Passive sonar, radar, missiles, Type 81s. Yeah, the looter's actually the more dangerous. I thought the Zhang Hu was bigger than that. Yeah, 3,230. Looter, I believe, is a Soviet, Soviet rework. 38 knots. I'll have to update. I have to update on that. I haven't checked this in a while. So I might be a little rusty on some of the uh, the designations here. Yeah, it's much heavier, bigger guns, anti-missile defense as well. That is one of the difficult things, being, you know, 2000s era. Um, the South China Sea campaign doing missile attacks is a lot more difficult because virtually every boat has an anti-missile defense system and most of them are fairly good. So missile attacks 
outside of saturation attacks can be rather difficult in this campaign. Now, I haven't done a dot mod campaign of South China Sea. I believe the last campaign I did here was a uh, playable subs mod. So this is going to turn. This is going to be a lot more interesting with how the AI play as well. This is going to get a lot more complicated, which is good. We're going to be playing in the bathtub with smarter AI, with better weapon systems, with a wider variety of vessels. This should be interesting. Right, a little bit of time's gone past, so we are going to make our turns on the torpedoes. These two ships have definitely got, they, they're definitely getting returns on us now, I believe. Let's just check our signature details. Uh, check. Actually, no, 20, negative 26, ne negative 39. Yeah, these, they can't hear us yet. Not yet. They're not getting a return on us. That's good. Oh, torpedoes have moved out far enough. We're going to send Torpedo 2. He's going to cut directly across towards the looter from the side. So we've got 26 minutes on the torpedoes. And 25. Now, being 2000s and being a modded campaign, these are slightly more advanced torpedoes as well. These are the the Mark 48 Mod 6s. So they're a little bit nastier than the ones that we, uh, we were playing with in the 1984 campaign. Although I'm kind of disappointed we don't have the ad caps. Uh, Australia, in conjunction with the United States, developed the ad cap, an advanced for a version of the Mark 48, and it's ludicrous. And that was my phone, so don't bother checking yours. Right, so Torpedo 1 will be sending it active in just a moment. At only 1400, the Zhang should be an easy kill. Um, yeah, even the looter. Nothing here should be big enough to require more than one torpedo, I wouldn't think. I am surprised the Zhang, being as it's the one that's running slow, it's only at 8.6. No, it's up to 21 knots. Okay, that's why it is deaf as a post. And the loot is the one that's slowed down now. Okay. Probably need to get these. Two's probably a little shallow south, actually. That's We need to increase the angle on that one. Fire control, weapon acquired. All right, torpedo one has. That is not going where I expected it to go, which means the Yang is actually more. Let me clear our initial markers. It's more about there. Looks like we have a better idea where the looter is. Solution on the looter is at sixty-six percent. Looter is currently at. Nine knots down to 7.7 .7 kilo yards. Con sonar, noisemaker, bearing, three, four, well, two. I was in the right marker, just not the right spot. Torpedo's definitely been detected, so going active on the sonar. Con, fire control, weapon acquired. Required. Target should pop up now because we just got a 99%. Con sonar, Sierra 2 there it is. is classified as escort. Con sonar, noisemaker, bearing in three, four, four. And got it wrong. It was three. So, still a Zhang Hu, but it was the other option. Two has acquired. Now 
Now my crew is completely inexperienced here too, so no auto updates here. The looter is at the very least well aware it's under attack now. 27 knots trying to maneuver. Con sonar, noisemaker, bearing, zero, zero, four. There it is, looter is located, go active on the torpedo. And we'll initiate a reload on tube one. Manually bringing two back around a target and holding. Con, fire control, weapon acquired. All right, torpedo is acquired and is manually tracking. Sonar, noisemaker, bearing, zero, zero, nine. All right, through with the noisemaker, manual control. Bring the torpedo around Con on the side and contact. straight into the zero, stern. One, last bearing, zero, one, Looted down. zero, contact breaking So up. our first two kills of the South China Sea campaign as Australia. Now let's see if we can go find those tenders. Alright, so mission report, HMAS Rankin, S-78, enemy engage, looter sunk, and a Zheng Hu-3 sunk, 5,190 tons, we fired two torpedoes in total, 5,190 experience gained, and this will not be our mission objective, this is not your objective of your current mission orders, no it was not, but they got in my way, so, continuing on. Alright, so we have been intercepted by an enemy submarine group, we have, what are you? I have no idea what that is, I'm not sure that is actually the submarine, yes, we were definitely intercepted by a submarine, that's something else. I'm going to go through every single thing that I can find here and try and work out what the hell that is. I have no idea. Alright, so I need to clear it for surface contact at least. Con, helm, steady course. Alright, to... Make depth four, four feet, dive by. No, on this one, we want to manually set this to Make 50. At 44 five, feet, feet, we'll actually by. stick the uh, conning tower out of the... Uh, out of the surface, which is not what we want. No. Anyways, conditions that we're at at the moment. 493 feet to play with. We've got 103 decibels, and we have absolutely no layers and no ducks to play with. So this has not given us... We have not got a lot here. Yeah, that's definitely something on the surface. Alright, so we'll just bring it up, we'll just uh, quickly pop the periscope, see if we can get a ID on exactly what the target is. And if we cannot, we will pop the radar and see if we can ID it. Which is a slight concern, because I know we're intercepted by a submarine, so there is a submarine here in the water that we cannot see. Well, right, we should... Con sonar, new Sorry, contact bearing, right. three, five, eight, designated okay, Sierra, Okay, that's two. close. Con sonar, new contact bearing, two, nine, eight, designated Sierra, oh, three. crap. All right. All right, we're almost at 50 feet. see what we've got here. These have to be submarines. 
that is a Han. Con sonar, Sierra 2 is classified as submerged submarine. That is not a Han. What is that? Con, dive at five zero feet, dive by. No. Maybe. Alright, I will not give that a designation just yet. All right, so we're going to be at 49 feet. Fine, then. Let's Meet go to periscope depth. Four, four feet, dive by. Con, sonar, new contact bearing. Con, dive at four, four feet, dive by. Okay, I take it back. It doesn't stick it out anymore. That must have been corrected. Cool. Up scope. All right. Con sonar master one is classified as merchant. That's a merchant. Looks like we've got an ID on that one before we've had a chance to even spot it. So master three two nine four. There. Con sonar master three four. is classified as merchant. Down right. scope. Down scope. Reset to 100 feet. Depth, one, zero, zero feet, dive by. We do have a Sierra 4 out there as well. Yeah, I reckon that'll be a trawler as well, just looking at that. Yeah, that's a trawler Con as well. Right, so there are two trawlers and a merchant and a Han. Merchant. The Han is coming in our direction. Solution on the Han is 55. And Come right, left I'm two, a left three, turn, two, and I'm going to run us parallel to the Han. Con, dive at one zero zero feet, dive by. And it is close. Three point two kilo yards range. Change that. I want to go directly to Come right it. to keep three, our five, nine, keep our school shielded. Seventy eight. It's doing ten knots at the moment. Helm, steady solution. course. Eighty-five, three kilo yards. Re. There we go. Ninety-five percent. We have behind. That's a four kilo yards range. All right. So I'm going to retract the towed array, and I'm going to call Make full stop. Turns for zero knots. Maneuvering and up. ultra quiet. Oh no, Rig ultra, 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 ultra quiet. Stay ultra quiet. Stay ultra quiet. I'm going to sit here and make as little noise as possible. So current output's 128.9 decibel. Ambient is 103. We're close enough. There's no real fancy shit that I can do here. You gotta give it to the hands though. They are a clean looking boat. We've got four tubes up front. Sorry, take that back. Six tubes up front. They are clean looking. Uh, 
runs down to five. And it seems to be turning after the merchant at the moment. Alright, so we've been speed zero, just gently turning for quite a while now. The Han got down to 2.8 kiloyards range, and it's opening up the gap at the moment. It's back up to 3.2, and it has not detected us at all. It has no idea that we are here. So it's... Speed is changing as depth, which it has been doing all along. Got fast, got slow, got fast. It's getting slow again down at the moment. It's down to six, so it looks like it's speeding up, slowing down, listening. So I'm going to wait till it accelerates. It's only accelerating up to 10 knots. So 3.2. I could sit here, and it looks like it's eventually going to give me its baffles fully. Maybe I won't wait till it accelerates. I was thinking I'd wait till it accelerates at the moment and fire, but if we can very, very, very slowly turn. I'm gonna set speed one. Make, make turns for one knot maneuvering eye. Just enough so that we've got the uh, the screw turning so we can bring our nose around a little bit faster. I don't want to give it too much because it's on an angle at the moment the Han might be able to actually hear our screw. It's over here somewhere. We still can't see it on the 3D, it's not that close, but at least not from the perspective of where we are. But it's not far away. 3.4. If it turns left, just a little, it's back up to 10 knots, so it's not listening again. And it is, it is very slowly turning, turning to port, so turning to left. We might be able to get a torpedo out here. Five. All right, screw it. We're going to give it a shot. Gun fire control. We've lost. Oh, fire. you're joking me. Oh, that is just uh, that's me getting trolled. Shoot. Two, two away. Snake eyes on the first torpedo. God. Of course. Spent ages trying to get into an optimal shot where we can get a torpedo in the water without being detected at close range. And we get a wire break. So now we're on a timer. Because if we don't get our torpedo over here to take out the Han fast enough... The Han will detect the loose torpedo because we can't do anything about it to keep it in the baffles. It's going to go out the other side and eventually be detected. Although, it looks like the baffle on the Han is pretty wide, or it just really hasn't got its uh, hasn't got hydrophones on at the moment. It is still running at ten knots, so it's still running at speed. Right, we'll start closing. Follow it all the way to the rear. Con, torpedo room, tube one ready. Actually, at the very least, looking at that angle. Yeah, by, we should have killed the submarine by the time this gets clear. Considering how wide that was to the Collins. The hand seems to have quite the dead spot.
really close Con, enough. Helm, steady course. And we'll go active and just bring it straight in from behind. I think we'll just let it go active where it is. I won't even bother moving or adjusting it. We'll just manually turn it once it's uh, if it doesn't automatically detect the Han at this range, which it should. We're only 4.2 kilo yards. Like between Con, us. fire control, weapon yep. acquired. Automatically detected the Han. And right up its ring. Han still maintaining 10 knots. Has not detected the torpedo at all. Is not manoeuvring. Is not deploying countermeasures. Has not reacted. It has no idea. Con sonar lost contact. Sierra two last bearing one zero two contact breaking up. So report, HMAS Rankin, S-78, one enemy Han sunk, 5,500 tons, two torpedoes fired. So we have 12 Mark 48s remaining on board at the moment. We're still running four AGM 84s, and we still have our two MOS. Crew proficiency increased, 22,000 experience gain for sinking the submarine, but this is obviously not our target. So we'll have to continue into the Yellow Sea and see whether or not we can actually locate these tenders, which is our objective. But anyways, ladies and gents, we're going to save that for the next episode. Now, I'm going to actually be running two Cold Waters series in parallel here. We'll be doing the HMAS Rankin, Collins class, and I'm going to be doing a Russian one, which is the Progressive Campaign, which I haven't started yet, but it should be up in the next couple. And uh, that's the one where we should start off in a real junker boat and have to progress all the way through to something nice and advanced by the end of the campaign. And that will be in 1984 from the Russian side. So that should be fun. Anyways, guys, until next time, take care.